What's up? What's up, everybody? It's your man, Governor Wildstar. Hey, and welcome to the Black Side of Liberty. Appreciate each and every one of you for being here with me because I have an extraordinary guest who I'll be introducing momentarily. First, I want to say, of course, to all of you out there watching it, please head on over to my Governor Wildstar YouTube channel if you're not on um my youtube channel watching right now be sure to hit that subscribe button help me reach my goal of 30,000 subscribers as soon as possible I'm doing my best to spread the word about the libertarian movement and what we can do to liberate our people as much as possible but it starts first with us reaching more people out there so they can know exactly about what's going on here so please definitely like i said be sure to hit subscribe share any one of my videos those viral videos of me uh challenging the cops and uh in the courtroom or you know during the traffic stop or whatever the case may be any of those videos watch them share them spread the word and let people know that i am running for office to represent we the people okay also, head on over to my website, GovernorWildstar.com. As you can see it right there down at the bottom of the screen, GovernorWildstar.com. Be sure to hit any of those social media tabs, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or whatever. Be sure to connect with yours truly again so we can hit those numbers. Let more people out in, in the world know that we are growing, that we are connecting, that we are keeping each other informed about what's really going on on the streets, okay? Um, and please definitely donate uh some asshole left a message on my last video a comment talking about quit asking for donations well guess what fucktard if i don't ask for them i'm not going to get them so i gotta ask for them and the way the politics work is if you don't give me those donations somebody else will <laughs> so make sure that you give me an opportunity to run for office and put me in your pocket versus some other you know donor whoever they may be okay um but it is extremely imperative and that's how it work and so i'm going to need you guys out there to again to help spread the word and inform others about what we're doing so i want to introduce my guest to you guys with no further ado because he is waiting backstage thankfully and um i don't want to hold him for his time because he's a very busy man and first but first before i do that I want to show you guys out there this quick video that I found on this man before we proceed. Check it out. Tell me what it's all about. All right, here we go. Franklin Governor Roosevelt introduced the Economic Security Act. I am revising it. It's called the Social Security Transparency Act. I want everybody here to know that if you have a Social Security number, that is an account number, and it's linked to your private trust. It's been going on for many, many years. The only reason why we set up the Economic Security Act because we didn't have the goal to pay off our debt. Understand? So under my administration, you all will begin to receive what's already yours. 30 seconds. And what's yours is your piece of Wall Street, your piece of stock market. It's being traded on every time you pay your bills, every time you pay your credit card. Anyway, listen to me. Each American can now receive a dividend of over $10,000. No more pie in the sky, 1500 crap. Y'all got to get what's yours, and that's why I'm here. Y'all need a real warrior. I'm a fighter. I might be, but let me tell you this. I may not have 2020 vision. Days. I may not have 2020 vision, but I have a vision for 2020. Elect President R-19. Woo! You heard that right here. President R-19 body says he going to push all that $1,500 crap off to the side, get y'all what you're supposed to be getting, all of the money that the, your government has been trading using your social security number, starting at $10,000 and could possibly end up being more. I'll let him tell you more about it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to introduce to you Mr. President R-19 Body. What's up with you, President Body, and welcome to the Black Side of Liberty. Hi, how are you today, sir? I'm doing incredible. I'm very happy that you were able to be here because I'm very excited to meet you. I mean, I heard that uh, message in your video and was very inspired by those words. You don't hear many politicians talking about any of those uh, secrets <laughs> that you exposed uh, during that during that exchange there. So um, I am very thankful to have you here on the show again on the Black Side of Liberty and uh, appreciate you for being here with me. Well, it's a blessing to be here and thank you for having us. Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, of course, 
Um, like I said, I stumbled across that video and I definitely had to reach out and connect with you. But lots of people out there haven't seen that video, haven't heard your name, don't know who the hell you are. So please, President R19 Body, can you please tell the people out there who is the president? I'm just a humble servant. I love you. I'm here to serve. You know, I'm, I'm um, a person that, like yourself, I'm only interested in the truth and the action of the truth. You know what I mean? Truth is a verb. It's not just a noun. And truth has to get into action. So I think uh, what sums it up, I am your leader, your commander, and your servant, moreover. You know, I'm more of a servant that is pushed into a leadership position. So that's why I'm here. I'm here to love and serve and correct. Correct everything that's wrong and make it right and make it in favor of all Americans. All right. Wow, that's incredible because like I said, you don't hear many politicians speaking as you know, frankly, as you are and, and directly, especially about these issues in particular, but uh, we are indeed all humble servants of the creator of us all. Yeah. Um, and for some reason, those same politicians, when they get into office, care less about that, you know, oath to humanity to care about one another mm -hmm. and see us all progress, you know, and that, that is definitely an ordained position since you're being put in such a leadership position. And yeah. so many people are reliant upon those leadership skills of yours to help them better their lives. You know what I mean? Yes. So with that being said, with this video that I just saw, <laughs> you talked about giving Americans, all Americans, ten thousand dollars plus, you know, based on this social security number, which uh, I know is being traded and used um, as a commodity on Wall Street. Many people out there are unaware of this, but your social security number is actually linked to a, um, a trust account where the government actually trades you as a person on Wall Street and gains wealth from that. But we, the people don't benefit from that. I guess that's where your social security payment is supposed to come in, but that only kicks in at a certain age. And then if you die before that happens, that goes into the ether or better yet collected by the government, right? Yes, sir, absolutely right. And what you're speaking on is actually in the United States title law. When you look up banking law, it actually speaks in the uh, US commercial uh, banking laws um, title 31 about banking and it even speaks about birth certificates and they even admit that the birth certificate our birth certificate your birth certificate has a value of one million dollars most people don't understand what that means so to make it real simple for the sake of time the moment we walk in office sir the first thing we're doing is allowing you to have and hold your social security card which you've been holding the whole time. We're just taking the covers off of it. And we're saying to you, that is your bond. It is your bond. And what we're adding to it is a social security credit card. The first ever United States treasury card or United States social security treasury card. What that would allow you to do is discharge any debt, right? On a 90 day basis. So once you discharge your debt, your utility bills, for example, right? then you will send that to our treasury department, right? We will credit. We will credit, um, let's say, Fresno County right, or Fresno City. I, I don't know the name of your utility. We will send the credit and you don't have to worry about paying debt no more because this note is legal tender for all debts, private and public. So you don't have to worry about any debt. You cannot use it to go buy a Lamborghini, of course, or you know what I mean, or to go buy a $300,000 house. But you can discharge the debt once you enter into a debt. That's what we were talking about. House Joint Resolution 192. My beloved, it's already on the books. What we're going to do under the President Body Administration is we're going to enforce the laws for all, not just for the few. So House Joint Resolution 192 basically states that all future debts right, are hereby discharged. So the moment we walk in office, if you owe Wells Fargo $300,000 for your mortgage, guess what? Possession is nine-tenths of the law. Right. The moment we step in, that house is yours and right. you but you still have to pay the taxes. So I wanted to give it to, like you said, your people in a very simple way. But there will be every American will possess a United States Treasury credit card. That means you ain't got to worry about. Right. FICO, Fair Isaac Corporation. How is it fair to Isaac 
I mean, well, you know, that's another story. It's not fair because the investors are using your credit score as an investment score. 720 means, okay, then we can buy your score along with 10,000 other people and they trade it and you're paying American Express or Capital One um, $35 a month, but that's going into an investor's pocket and they're making millions and millions and millions of dollars and you're in debt. No, this is the land of the free. President R19 body will finally free Americans from debt. There will be no more national debt. I'll explain that to you. Wow, that's incredible, man. You just broke down a whole lot that people probably will be chewing on for a long time. <laughs> uh, earlier this week, I was attempting to inform people more about Black's Law Dictionary and our legalese and uh, legal system in general and about how it is connected to our monetary system also in effect um, because we are property. We're still treated as property in this country. And you broke it down to where uh, on the books, where you being used, our labor is Come being on. used yeah. to again gain wealth for the American government who then pockets that money pretty much in the central banking system and all of the profiteers from that, et cetera. But uh, like you said, that's another story for a different day. And I appreciate you for touching on that as much as you did. But um, uh, what I want to ask you about next, is, um, I guess the recent proposal for reparations in this country to be given to black people. And I guess that ties into it somewhat since you're offering to give $10,000 or more to all Americans. But right now uh, you do have government officials that are pushing for reparations, uh, compensation for uh, the American descendants of slavery. Here in California, they're actually pushing that bill through legislation where it looks like that could be signed into law soon. So what I want to ask you, President Body, is uh, will reparations help the Black community? Because it's, it's a good idea that, again, uh, many Black people seem to be supportive of don't really understand, you know, economics in general, have no clue about financial literacy or money or where it comes from, but yet support this idea of us being given free money. So I want to ask you, President Body, is reparations a good idea to help the Black community and will it? Well, thank you for the question. The greater idea is restitution, right? Um, Woo! When we look at <laughs> thank you. When we look at our condition as a people, right? Uh, we've been promised reparation for over 200 years now, right? And we never got it. And so what we're bringing, meaning President Biden's administration, right? Is restitution. Because restitution is what you pay the victims. Mm -hmm. And we, we have been victims. And the restitution would be paid, right? If you are an African-American, right? Or a Negro slave or Nubian, right? Whatever name that we choose to, identify ourselves, which we're going to get into what we're really going to do in a minute, right, with the ART, A-R-T, American Race Treaty. There will be a race treaty, right, that our administration will sign, right, which is we will race towards the advancement of our nation for the sake of our future in favor of the children. However, right, with regards to your question, in the 40s, as you know, the United States uh, incorporated, right, um, you know, during the 40s, where we literally paid $20,000 per every Japanese citizen, right, that was in the United States of America for what we did, right, to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, why did we pay Japan, right, or, Jap or Japanese citizens, bless their hearts, but we didn't pay, right, African Americans? Because it was never intended for reparations. So now it is a talking point in order to, um, let's say, corral the votes, right, for a particular reason, right, meaning to control our minds and get us to a particular point, no. Under my administration, we have to make our people wealthy, not just our people, but all the people. Let me tell you how we're gonna do it, right? It's gonna be by virtue of a cash treasury bond. Once again, nothing new. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just use the wheel that rolls, mm -hmm. that really, that moves. It's already on the books. So for example, the moment I walk in office, right, we sign into law an executive order for restitution for every descendant of an African slave that is in this country, you know what I mean? And 
right? So there'll be checks and balances for that. You know what I mean? Because you might have just came over here from Haiti. That's another story. There is love and consideration for that, but for every wow. African American citizen. So, for example, a one million dollar Treasury bond. Now, what would that allow you to do? You hold that bond. It's going to hold its value, right? Because we're not going to be creating money out of thin air, right? We still have to keep the economy going, right? But yet you're going to get paid, right? Your dividend from that one million dollars. You know what I mean? And the dividend is one percent of whatever the bond, right? The bond, the restitution bonds accrue. So investors can invest in restitution bonds for African Americans, and it's still going to accrue your money. So once, let's say 1% a month, right? The 1% a month can get you about $10,000 a month. That's not the 90 days that's given to every American. This is an incentive for African Americans. You know what I mean? And with that, and with that incentive, and with that incentive, can you still see me? Am I good? Yes, sir. You good. Okay. All right. And with that incentive, and with that incentive, you will also be able to withdraw and, you know, have cash on hand. Right. That's your money. That's cash money. So everything has to make sense. I don't know what they're doing in California, but I applaud them. But under our administration to do it on a national level. Right. It still is going to be based on Treasury. It's going to be based on our bonds and people can invest in it. And it's going to always it's going to stimulate the economy. It's going to stimulate growth. Right. Other nations right, can participate in it. You know what I mean? Because it's going to be a good thing and it's going to pay you at least 10,000. Right now, what if your bond made, let's say, 100 million? Right. Then you still get your one percent. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Everything that means you can be a literally a millionaire. You know what I mean? But I need my people, black people to understand how economy works. Right. So they can appreciate this is your bond. It's going to hold its value forever. Right. For your generations to come. Right. This it will never decrease. This is one million dollars. And every month it's just like a royalty check. Right. That the temptations are still getting royalties. You will be getting royalties. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Restitution for the rest. That's why it's restitution. You can rest in this institution that I'm putting for because it's going to take care of you forever. Right. Under my administration, black people will never be broke again. I hear Biden, whom I love, talks about, oh, we got to help the low income. Under my administration, there's high income. There will be no more low income. What do you mean low income? There should be no low income. Right. Mm -hmm. No more handouts. You know what I mean? No more EBT. Right. Because that makes you feel like a do gooder. But the do gooding mentality keeps everybody on the bottom, and certain mm. people on the top. No more. Not under my administration. But everything's got to make sense. Wow, that's incredible, man. You touched on so much, bro. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> like I said, mind blowing for uh, many of us out here that are listening to you, including myself, because uh, it's very refreshing to hear someone speak so openly about these issues, especially um, you know, someone running for president, a black man running for president, speaking about our economical system in a way that where it can be more empowering for the black community opposed to us feeling like it's working against us, you know? And uh, you actually said something that I've been echoing myself, which is restitutions. So I applaud you for that, damn it, because <laughs> there is a big different and uh it, it does take us speaking about the issue of reparations in order to make that clarity you know why do you want to penalize people that had nothing to do with slavery tax them have them pay for this uh for this fault that someone else is guilty of you know and that's what restitution does is it puts the uh responsibility of paying back those you have harmed on those specific individuals themselves and you got multi-billion dollar company trillion dollar companies out there that have um have made their uh wealth you know off of black people and uh you also touched on something else by talking about you know people coming from haiti and cuba and all of this other stuff or even africa coming to america being assumed to be black you know, and possibly could be recipients of these reparation payments because of that assumption. So there is another distinction with, with regards to identity of true descendants of slavery here in this country. And um, um, uh, California, it's sort of like, uh, it's just playing by the same old game, you know, mm -hmm. and it's something that if it, if it does end up being successful, could definitely bankrupt the state even more than it is because, you know, we have a two, three, five trillion dollar unfunded liability um, portion of our income that hasn't been paid off through pension payments and 
all of these other uh, benefit payments, et cetera. So uh, thank you for speaking on that. And um, I do want to ask you this because the role of president is so big and um, it, it seems like it only because or perceptually because of the role that's been given to the president and what the past presidents have done with their administration. So I want to ask you, since you are running for president, why are you running as a Republican? Because you're a black man, people see you and they're automatically going to assume, you know, maybe you should be running as a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> so why would you choose the Republican Party, especially now of all times with it receiving a, a lot of slack about it being prejudiced and white supremacist and then you got Trump out there. So uh, why run as a Republican? I'm glad you asked that question. If you and your um, your viewers and your listeners were to log on, let's say to FEC.gov, you see that I'm I'm really running as a write-in candidate right now, right? We are literally write-in candidates for president. When we first started, right, we ran Republican. Why did we run Republican? Is not really my choice, right? There was my mentor, Dave Parrish, right, was teaching me about the Republican Party. I don't know why. Um, before he passed on. I didn't even know that I would ever run for president. I never wanted to run for president. I never even voted a day in my life, right, until the midterms 2018. I never was interested in politics in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So I can only say that the spirit of the living God, right, moved me and spoke with me saying on January 28, 2018, run for president. And my first ambition, right, or uh, thought once spirit moved on me to run was to run independent. And then the spirit spoke clearly said, run Republican. I didn't know why. And I obeyed the spirit, right? Of what the spirit of the living God ordered me to do. And in doing that, it was tremendous, as you stated, persecution, tremendous uh, lack of support. First, everybody was real happy. Oh man, you're running for president. A lot of my friends were millionaires, right? And then they, but they were Democrats. And I'm thinking, okay, they're gonna be happy. They said, no, we can't support you. And so I had to walk that lonely road you know what I mean? Up until the New Hampshire primary of uh, February 11, 2020, we scored 72 votes in New Hampshire, 99.1% white, right? We only did one event. 100 people showed up right, at an event that we spoke at, televised by C-SPAN, a debate. And out of those 100 people, 72% voted for me, meaning 72 people. That was my only exposure. When that happened, my publicist received phone calls. We got calls from all over the country. And the um, the media was saying, hey, he could make an impact. We got him under our radar. Like, that was crazy. How did this man get 72% of white votes? And from that point on, COVID hit. And I, I, then I went into the Democratic Party, you know what I'm saying? Which I, I began to say to everybody, the people in the Democratic Party got pure hearts. But a lot of the Democrat politicians, right, are crooked. You know what I mean? And I went in that party with the intentions of spreading love, right, for the sake of the people and to reach out to a lot of, when I say crooked, I mean, they keep money for themselves and they look out for themselves. And we as a people, we say we're Democrats and we don't expect nothing. You know what I'm saying? Which is conditioned. It's a, like a hypnosis. And I went in there for a moment and then I shifted to where I'm at now, right in as a right in candidate. So. Um, I'm not a Republican right now. I'm a write-in. And I only ran Republican because the spirit of, you know, obedience is best, right? So I obeyed what the spirit of the living God ordered me to do. And I saw the benefits. Now, right, we're doing it for real because people ask me, what is your religious affiliation? I love you regardless of your religious affiliation. That's my religious affiliation. Love. Mm. Mm. Thank you for that. Um, and I mean, even with you running as a write-in candidate, that's, definitely setting you apart from the rest because um like you said when you originally stepped on the scene you captured the attention of so many people and unfortunately this COVID-19 pandemic panic interrupted that momentum yeah. but um had pe more people been exposed to you as a Republican uh using the Republican Party platform and just their soapbox for you to stand on and be heard by the masses would have definitely catapulted you to the forefront. So I'm yeah. very sad to hear that uh the you know the coronavirus quarantine uh, affected your campaign in such a way. But you kept 
four. It kept moving four. You know, you stayed vigilant in that effort. And here you are now still on uh, giving we the people an opportunity to vote for you as a write in candidate. So um, I appreciate you again for staying committed to the cause. Yes. Uh, because that's what it's really all is, uh, all about is, you know, giving we the people a true representative that we can be believe in and be yeah. faithful in and, yeah. and love and support wholeheartedly. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. uh, it's sad that where the dynamic of red and blue, right and left, Republican and Democrat has divided our country and divided we the people from wanting that true desire from our leaders. And um, hopefully that is that spirit is resurrected in some way through your campaign. Yeah. Um, so with the whole Republican thing, I yeah. want to touch on that because uh, we just had a presidential debate and uh, <laughs> in that debate, it was madness, you know, yeah. and, uh, I guess out of that, there was an issue that was spoken of about um, mail-in ballots, you know, mm -hmm. and the inconsistency of doing such. Now, mail-in ballots have been around for a long time, you know, especially our military have been able to vote by mail. Um, people that live abroad, still American citizens are able to vote by mail. Uh, if you have that absentee ballot, you're still able to vote. So with it now being implemented on such a level to where you have states, certain states like my state, state of California, where our governor, our Democratic governor has mandated mail-in ballots because of this whole lockdown and prevented we the people from going to polling places in person. Uh, it has caused a bit of strife, you know, again, uh, uh, dividing the people, more divide. And the Rep Republican party seems to be afraid of mail-in ballots in the whole procedure because they think it'll work against them. Do you think mail-in ballots are a smart idea, especially right now with all of this going on? Do you think it's something that could, we still should be reliant upon to give us an actual outcome that we can be proud of? As president of the United States of America, as you know, I am, a, I am sworn to uphold the Constitution of the United States. And in the Constitution, it speaks about how Congress shall agree on one date, right, for the um, election. And as you know, in the beginning, that date was March 4th, right? And now Congress has reenacted a new date, which is the first Tuesday of the election year of November, first Tuesday of November of the um, election year. Um, so said that, having said that, I truly believe that there should be one date. However, you bring up a beautiful point military people, um, the elderly, etc. So that is something where you should have your, um, for example, right, when we are getting on these ballots in these states, they're giving us deadlines. We have to have deadlines, right? And they say, for example, in order for us to get on the ballot in Texas, we had to meet the deadline by 4.30 p.m. on August the 18th, literally. And mm -hmm. so we had our team in Texas getting signatures at the last minute. And that's not it easy as it sounds, because you got to get people to give you their name, address, phone number, their voting registration ID. That's not a joke. But we got on Texas and we got with about 10 minutes to spare and we did wonderful. But it, there has to be a system to where all mail-in ballots, right, can be in by November 1st. Do I think it's smart? As long as it was truthful. In Minnesota right now, they have a bunch of people in Minnesota that are being um, examined and investigated, right, for literally extorting ballots from mm. voters you know that's all over in minnesota and i don't know how widespread that is right but it's now coming out that people are harvesting ballots and they're throwing away ballots so it does leave room for some type of fraudulent activity so i i believe in a postmark and the postmark should be by a certain date november 1st november 3rd and i say that because for example in the state of maine we couldn't get on the ballot in maine which we are now until August 21st. They wouldn't even allow us to uh, put in the necessary petitions. And you had to get them notarized. This is not a game. And you had to be able to do it right in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. And no one was willing to accept any, you know, um, you know, excuses. You got to make it happen. So, yeah. but we couldn't apply until August 21st. And then you had until September the 4th to make it happen. So 
Same thing with the voting, right? You shouldn't be able to do early voting in September. Let me tell you something. In Minnesota, for example, right? I am a presidential candidate. And do you know that they started early voting in Minnesota, which is against the law? I asked them, I said, how are you going to do early voting, right? And you haven't reached the deadline of Minnesota. What I mean by that, the deadline to get on the ballot in Minnesota is October 23rd. How are you, right? That's just like um, Donald Trump, for example, being a Republican. And let's say if he did his convention first, right? And Biden didn't finish his convention. And then all of a sudden, right? You're doing early voting, but Biden's name is not even nominated yet. How are you going to have a voting in Minnesota and I haven't been nominated yet? You know what I mean? Meaning I'm not on the ballot. You have to wait till the deadline. They were wrong. And in so being wrong, let me tell you something. As you know, I can hear in your spirit, I know you know that this is the year of justice. Anything that is unfair gets exposed immediately. Mm. And so Minnesota got exposed. If for no other reason, right, you're disrespecting all the candidates, especially President R19 body. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know what I mean? Just, just for the fact that I brought it to their attention and the lady stuttered and stuttered and stuttered and she said, I can't answer these questions. <laughs> you know what I mean? But and a lot of people, unfortunately, they are completely unaware of this process. You know, right. uh, just getting ballot access is an uphill battle in itself. You know, and, I know, you know, right? Because you was, yeah, you was the mayor. You ran for mayor, right? Yes, sir. I ran right, for mayor so you know. and governor twice. So okay. uh, I know all about it all too well. Yeah, I even ran as a write-in candidate my first time in office. And wow. that was difficult in itself because they don't really explain the procedure correctly or fully and thoroughly enough for you to understand. Uh, they have certain procedures as far as where you can put your political signs. They don't really clarify clearly right. as to where that is. I mean, there's just kind of these little nuances. And even with what you just said about ballot access, how can you send out ballots to people and allow them to vote when all of the candidates aren't even, you know, in yet, you know, haven't registered or have an opportunity to be promoted to voters so they know all of the candidates that they're going to be voting for. I mean, um, I'm personally going to be voting for a libertarian candidate. Her name is Joe Jorgensen. I apologize. I pledged to vote for her. But even with her, it's been difficult for her to get access into these presidential debates, even though the Libertarian Party is the third largest party in the United States. Mm -hmm. So um, it's all of these kind of uh, blockades in a way that are preventing us from being able to proceed forward and have more choices when it comes to our representatives. And with this whole ballot thing, um, I, what I did also hear during the debate, the little bit that I scrapped along from that uh, shitty ass conversation was uh, that Trump was un is unwilling to concede his victory if, let's say, for instance, by November, mid-November, late November, ballots are still coming in. You know, each election, there seems to be some issue with, um, you know, ballots. Uh, was it uh, the presidential election? I think it was Ohio or something. They were still counting ballots. Then you had the Bush debacle where, you know, the whole entire state of Florida, which his brother was governor of at the time, uh, was still counting ballots. So it, there's always seemed to be an issue with regards to counting ballots and um, them being accurately counted. So that's to be expected this time, especially with all the what's going on in the, in the country with the lockdown, et cetera. So uh, it's. A, a bit scary, so to speak, to hear a president say and, and also promote to other people to go out there and use vigilante justice if they feel like they're being robbed of a victory. I mean, it's kind of setting us up for some chaos, wouldn't you say? Well, I, I don't know. Um, as far as the vigilante justice, I don't know what comments, you know, that um, he may have made or anything like that. But one thing I do know is on November 3rd, 2020, right? And up until the time when it's known, right? The American people will be in for a big shock because you are on the line right now with the president of the United States of America, believe it. And how and when it's going to be known is I would say definitely after November 3rd, don't know how long it's gonna take, but when those votes are counted, and let me tell you why, 
it's because it's already done. You know what I mean? And anybody who knows me knows that I'm already the president of the United States of America. And to that, I would say you would have to interview people who know that why Trump, right? The moment I got on the ballot in Texas, why did Trump make a phone call to Texas, right? And the Texas had to call me and say, oh, we have to, your ballot access now is pending. Why did Trump email me? You know what I'm saying? And I always tell people I love Trump. I love Biden. I love everybody. Why did he email me? I won't discuss the content of the email, right? Because of integrity, right? There's a whole lot of things that you, my brother, and the rest of y'all and whoever else you're voting for, they need to know. All of y'all need to get behind me and support me. Why? Because when you do that, it's going to change for everybody for the best, for real. You know what I mean? Like if you really can feel the love and the content that is in me, that's because it's marrying something on the inside of you. You know what I mean? And so this movement of love and service, right, will put an end to fear and disservice because fear is running the country right now. I don't mean Trump in so much as fear. I mean, a lot of people are in a state of fear. So, right, why, for example, again, why did I get a, why did um, the Trump, his team, you know what I mean, emails I got? When I got on Texas, it was a big fear. It shook, oh, shook something. You're yeah. a threat to the establishment, man. I mean, just hearing a little bit that you're talking about as far as money. I mean, money is the lifeblood of this country, you know, yeah. <laughs> So for any country. So for you to threaten the establishment, the uh, central banking system, which has had control of this country since it, you know, the Federal Reserve Act was signed into law by Woodrow Wilson, you know, you're a threat to that power, that established power. So, of course, someone with you, like you would uh, definitely be threatening to them. So well, I let, me tell you, let, me, let me tell you why, beloved. Do you mind? Go ahead. Okay, because I had to make sure we end, um, meaning get in on what you're saying in the, in the most respectable way, because you, you brought up something beautiful, uh, which is central bank. Understand this, that the Illuminati or the deep state or the imperialists, as they're called, right, they have absolutely no concern, listen now, with the central bank. That is a piece on their chess table. Mm -hmm. They have greater concerns. As you stated earlier, and you're absolutely true, that they're more concerned with the chattel or the cattle, which are the people, and how to sell the people back to China. Let me tell you, the worst possible scenario for the United States is Joe Biden and Obama getting back into power. Why? Because there's a big debt owed to China. And don't you know, beloved, that there are slave camps in China, right? Look it up, ethnic slave camps. They've already started it since COVID. And don't you know that in 2016, right, we as Americans, regardless of race, were supposed to be one by one, group by group, family by family, begin to be shipped over to China in order to pay the massive debt. Now, how did the massive debt accumulate? And no one among the candidates can make it so clear, beloved, that the massive debt began to accumulate during the Carter administration, really before. But let's talk about the Carter administration. Everybody remember how hard that was? That's when the good times came out. Remember James Evans and Flo and all of that came out during that time? That was when times was real rough. Then Reaganomics came in. Then the crack came in. Right. Then Bush came in. Right. Then Clinton came in. He's the first one who said, make America great again. We as black people, we didn't question that. Why? Because we as a people have been hypnotized by headline news. Remember, when you was a child, right, we used to watch headline news. If there was nothing else to watch, I don't know about you, but down in East Point, Georgia, Atlanta, where I'm from, we didn't have access to a lot of other stations. So you would watch headline news 24 hours a day. Now we're hypnotized, but well, we can't get away from CNN. Why? Because they're, they're bombarding us with sound waves that is giving us thought. It's called mind control that we wouldn't normally have. Now, let me tie it in and give it back to you. So what's taking place right now? is China has bought the souls of most politicians. What I mean by that? Ex-presidents, ex-generals, ex-NSA, uh, ex-CIA, ex-military, ex-ex-ex, all the way down, right down to the black list. And it's not a game, right? My wife tells me that a certain member of the, let's say, United States intelligence agent walked up to her and says, we have secretly placed your husband on the black genius list. Bill Clinton wrote my wife in 2012. Here's your proof. 2012, right? December 12th. Well, no, December 17th. This is very important. 2012. He says, we have been watching you all of your life. We know exactly who you are. He says, we are prepared to offer you a chance of a lifetime. 
He goes on to say that if you join us, he said, we're called the imperialists. He said, we're known by many names. He said, but for the sake of discussion, we'll say imperialists. He says, if you join us, we'll give you access to sex with any celebrity that you desire. He says, we will give you millions of dollars. He said, romantic partners. He reiterated that, right? And he says, we'll even show you, listen now, our underground bases, underground bases, underground bases. You people have no idea. You do, but I got to tell you the truth that the only one that can, listen, that they fear is me. Let me tell you what I mean by that. So they said to my wife, Bill Clinton said to my wife that you have to sign on the dotted line and you have until December, listen to the date, 21st, listen, 2012. What date does that sound like? That was the date of the so-called Mayan calendar when everybody was embracing for the end of the world, right? Mm -hmm. Bill Clinton gave my wife to December 21st, 2012, 12 p.m., fax this number back and you will begin immediately. He says, if you don't do it, we'll overlook you, right? Let me tell you, my wife didn't sign it, right? My wife at the time, she consulted, right? The spirit and was like, why? Why, why, why did they send this? And she said, boom, she pulled like, she had these access to Egyptian cards, right? This is before we got saved. And right, she pulled an Egyptian card and it says to destroy your marriage, to destroy your marriage. Why was Bill Clinton so interested in destroying our marriage? Because they knew what you're now finding out that in the year 2020, there's a man named R19. How do you stop R19? What is R19? Right, Bill, Bill Gates says R19 is a mathematical code that we cannot figure out, right? Now, who is this R19? A glitch, an anomaly. Who is this R19? That is the answer to COVID-19. What you all need to understand is that when you say COVID, right? You're saying Kobe, as in Kobe Bryant. The word COVID in Hebrew is Kobe, which is a Japanese word meaning wise. Well, when did Kobe Bryant die? January 26, 2018. And when did we go up to C-SPAN for the debate? January 28th, 2000, uh, excuse me, 20. I didn't mean to say 18. There's way more to that. But COVID means to measure, right? Who are they measuring? They're measuring me, meaning the Illuminati, whether you call them Democrats or Republicans, right? They don't like each other, but they will come together for a common cause. What cause? To stop this nigga from getting into office. We don't care <laughs> how it looks. We don't care what, what it takes. You know what I mean? We cannot. Why? Because I'm not cut from Harvard. You know what I'm saying? As you can tell, I'm cut from a totally different stone. One oh, stone. Yeah. yeah. So when, yeah. when we get in office, understand that is the real power shift, right? Mm -hmm. Like you said, man, I ain't never heard it like this. $10,000 every American, H-A-R. Why? Because that's love and truth. Meaning I, I, don't, I don't have an ambition, right? You can't buy my soul. I'm here to serve. You see what right. I'm saying? I'm here to serve and serve and serve and make sure I'm not even interested in a second term. Meaning, listen, I'm only running for president. Get this in your spirit because the spirit of the living God has ordered me to do so. Take another look, right? I am the answer of what you all have been waiting on for a long time. And the good thing about me is I'm going to become insignificant. Um, you know what I mean? Wildfire, I'm going to become insignificant. You're going to become significant, right? You ain't, and it won't be no CNN and Fox press news conferences. It's going to be the people conferences. Mm -hmm. All of y'all will be able to come to the White House. Why would you want to vote for anything? And after last night or Monday night, and y'all saw that situation, right? Then people and American people are starting to say, we need something different. Well, how about love? How about somebody who just want to come in and serve you? How about somebody who just want to say, make sure your children are safe? That's why we are establishing the United States Peace Force, right? Forget the loyalty to your party, man, and support what's real. The United right. States Peace Force, right, is, let me tell you, they're not going to Nipsey hustle me because gang members, right, Bloods and Crips under my administration, I love them so much, they will become united. They will become the new Peace Force, right, to, and we will put them on salary. Simple answer. There'll be no more crime, right, under my administration. You understand what I'm saying? And then it's going to be safe for black, white, red, yellow. Everybody in this country is going to finally feel peace, feel love. Why? Because I know who's orchestrating the mass shootings. I know where they are. I know who they are. And they know who I am. Yeah. Understand that differently. So Bill Clinton consulted psychics. He saw in 2020 what you are looking at right now. Who's going to be president of the United States of America? Donald Trump knows me. I love him. He wrote me. You understand? He emailed me. I won't tell you the content, right? Because of integrity. But believe me, he knows exactly who I am. And Biden knows who I am. You understand? He try to repeat me every now and then. It don't matter. It don't matter what you do, how you do it. When the votes are counted, y'all are going to bear witness to a miracle. 
And the miracle is that we are now in. It ain't no me in because I'm just one person. But like I said, I'm going to be so insignificant as your servant. I'd rather be called your servant than your president, to be honest with you. My name is President R19 Body. That's my legal name. Go ahead, man. I, you have the divine energy just flowing through you throughout. And uh, for you to be touching on so many things, I mean, numerology and uh, the imperialist control of the empire here in America. I mean, it, it, it definitely de does need to be uprooted, but you need somebody that's grounded. You need somebody that is spiritual, someone that is uh, full of the love of God and humanity and the uh, universe yeah. within them to share that and be to free us all from the chains of power. Um, so it, it, I mean, it would be a, an incredible miracle <laughs> indeed. And it would be a true blessing for us to be able to call you our serving president. There you so, go. Um, <laughs> I definitely hope that you are able to attract so many people, hopefully not only from this show, but just through your endeavors in general, um, because more people do need to know about you and everything that you're offering towards the people. But um, I, I want to ask you another question yeah. because you you do have the name president <laughs> and were you actually elected president with everything that's going on right now with this whole coronavirus lockdown you have um civil unrest among the community black and white uh you have the proud boys the white supremacists kkk you have the black lives matter movement and the black liberation movement the not fucking around crew you got so much going on in the communities that it, it just seems like it cannot be fixed. But as I said, somebody as, as such as yourself could step onto the scene and have those tools to actually mend what's going on in our community. So I want to ask you, uh, President Body, if you were the actual president right now and were elected as we the people as a representative, what would you be doing right now to help us? Well, the same thing we've been doing, right? And let me get it real clear. Do you heard of the incident in Baltimore, right? Let's say a couple months ago. What do you know about what happened in Baltimore? Matter of fact, what happened in Lebanon? You heard about a blast that took place mm -hmm. in Lebanon, right? Do you know that same blast happened, right, in Lebanon? And don't, I mean, in Baltimore, there's a woman in California, right? And the only thing I can say to you is the truth, right? This woman, I'm gonna say her name. She's um, a well-known person, but she reached out to me. And I said to her what the spirit gave me for her, which is go in your prayer closet at three in the morning, right? She went in her prayer closet. Um, matter of fact, she didn't go when I told her to go, right? So she woke up at 4.30 out of a bad dream, real quick. The dream that she saw, check this out, was a helicopter, right, bombing a plane. And she called me and asked me, well, what does this mean? I said, well, for one, next time we tell you get in that closet, get in that closet. And for two, right? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Tell me why. I, I turned on the news, right? And I turned on Fox through my smart app. And it says, Iran just tested a helicopter which shot a drone, a plane. So she saw something. And I didn't know what was going to happen next. I called her back and said, make sure you be in that prayer closet at 3 this morning. The next morning, she went in that prayer closet. The same day, Baltimore, right? This is after Lebanon, was supposed to get hit understand that there are nuclear reactors in the United States. Understand that everything you mentioned from the white boys and all these names, some of these names I never heard of before, is all being orchestrated by the United States Incorporated. There's a reason why they haven't been able to do what they do. I tell you, R19 is an anomaly. Bill Gates says he cannot figure out the mathematical code of R19. Whenever a mathematician says, well, what happens if you run across R19? They said, there's nothing we can do about it. Right, My very presence and everybody who's working with me and all of us who are in this love together, we're keeping them from the deep state from doing what they're really trying to do. They want to destroy the surface of the planet because they got underground bases. That's mm -hmm. what Bill Clinton was trying to tell my wife. He said, we'll show you our secrets. Why? Because I'm a blind man. Don't know if you know that. I was born blind, yet I can see. That's why I tell people, I may not have 20-20 vision, but I got a vision for 2020. Bill Clinton wanted my wife to leave me because had my, let me tell you, because right after we my wife didn't sign that paper 11 days later, 
right? On December 31st, 2012, our house, we had a 7,000 square foot home was foreclosed on. And the, listen, the Freemasons got involved with that. And they wrote the courts and says, we have to get rid of this woman. She cannot occupy this house because of the four corners of the earth. Meaning I'm the threat to the four corners of the planet because the earth is circle. When, when Trump walked into office, he says the earth is flat. That means that was the beginning of trying to extend, right? That which is not belonging to them. Meaning it's a power shift. Love has to serve, right? No more pride. I love Trump, but pride can no longer serve, right? Love has to serve now. So right. the answer to the question is what are we gonna do? We're gonna be doing what we already doing. We're calling the shot. We're making sure that what they are trying to do. Anytime we get wind of something, we get in the prayer closet. You know what I mean? And we're gonna shut it down. Now, when we get into the office, that's another statement. Cause now we walk into office, right? Who you think we're gonna be calling? Ready? You and everybody of light spirit and just say, okay, what do you do? Now get in your position. Cause everybody that's listening to the show right now, y'all got positions. And the only difference thing is, there ain't gonna be no SBA loan. You need an SBA grant. Why you gotta, why you gotta apply for credit when you are the credit? Under my administration, your life right, is a transmitting utility. So no, it ain't about an investment score. If you are alive and you are an American, then you have worth, you have value. That's what currency is. Currency is electricity. That means the only, only way you're gonna get all your blessings, the blessings of liberty, because you say you're libertarian, is you gotta make the right vote. Vote is voltage, Elec election is electricity. That electricity belongs to us. But the only way you're gonna experience all of this here that I'm saying, you know what I mean? Because why why waste your vote just to be loyal to a party? I'm talking to everybody. So cast your vote to where the miracle is going to manifest so we all can bless in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, wow. I mean, hearing you speak is very enlightening. I mean, I got to tell you that for sure. <laughs> you definitely got the gift of gab and are an uplifting fellow. And uh, yeah. it, it, it's not about being loyal to a party. You're absolutely right. We need to push all of the party politics away and start focusing on the substance of character, you know, and someone such as yourself, as I said, if more people knew about you, I kid you not, you would have a greater audience than you do right now. So I'm hoping that everyone watching out there definitely supports you in every way that they can. I've been dropping your website at the bottom, which is presidentbody2020.com. So definitely head over to the website, find out more about how you could support this man right here. And um, you talked on something about uh, uh, the spiritual battle that's happening right now, right before our eyes. A lot of people can feel it, but they kind of can't put words on how to explain it. And you did so, so poignantly. So I appreciate you for doing so. Um, and uh, like I said, that misconception, really, what I found has been used to separate us by based on race yeah. so you have a lot of people just out there fighting each other just based on skin color you know and um with the president stepping on to the scene uh you uh, you would definitely change that dynamic the two candidates that we have for president uh trump and um biden are you know lighter shades of these melanated people that you see before. Yeah. So um, I want to ask you about that since, you know, with us being black men and attempting to obtain positions of leadership, I'm pretty sure you've gotten told before that you probably are taking on much more than you can handle. But we feel in our hearts, we're meant to do this. You know, this is our godsend. This is our life path. And um, uh, Malcolm X said that white liberals would be the downfall of black people since they are catapulted to the front of our struggles. And we see that happening now with the Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, any of the protesters or rioters even ha that have been out there are white people. So I want to ask you flat out, um, can white people fix black people problems at this point, especially where we've been historically and our uh, loyalty into believing that supporting them would be better than supporting one of us. Do you think that that can happen? Well, flat out, the answer is the only way 
white people could ever help us is the right person has to be president of the United States of America. And what I mean by that is it's not about a black president. It's not about a white president. It's about the right president. And I am the right president for these United States. And in that love will begin to instruct the white people. You know what I mean? That's what I do know. Um, I don't know if you know it, right? I don't know the guy's name. Maybe you can help me with this. There was a black man who does a lecture on YouTube about how he, um, you know, befriended a member of the KKK, a high ranking, you heard about it? It's, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, yeah, and I don't, it's not the um, David Duke guys, another one. And at the end of it, the white man, after 20 years of being a Klansman and so much time spending with the black man, he says, I'm done with the Klan. He said, this black man showed me more love than anybody I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm meeting white people, you know, in order for me to get on the ballot in Minnesota, in order for me to get on the ballot in Idaho, understand there's nothing but whites up there. So white people are embracing me with love. Um, I'm not a member of Black Lives Matter, right? I love Black Lives Matter and only, only in so much that I understand what they're trying to do, but they got to be careful. The reality of it is Black Lives Matter says that they don't encourage or support, as you know, the uh, nuclear family. Well, how can Black Lives Matter if you don't support Black life, which matters? Because the Black family is where it matters. You know what I mean? That's what needs to be fixed. So we got to fix that. And Black Lives Matter, no, it's been hijacked by the crisis. What is the crisis? C-R-I-S-I-S, -I -S. what's that? China, Russia, Iran, system and state. I said that mm. on a YouTube video. The next day, the Trump administration went into Houston and shut down the uh, embassy in China. I'm calling the shots, you know what I'm saying? Because I know who Russian, China, they're all working together. You know what I mean? China, Russia, and Iran, what's that? Don't you know that there are 9 million Muslims in, uh, let's say Russia, 24 million Muslims in, let's say China, and Iran is an Islamic state now. I ain't got no problem with Muslims. I'm just saying, Islam has been trying to invade America since the early 1900s. But in, listen to this, in order for Islam to succeed, Islam felt that they had to get the worst people, which is black men, they said. Black men in America in the 1900s was at the bottom of the totem. They said, if you give them a new religion, right, and you teach them how to think like an Arab, right, then now you got Black Lives Matter, which is being controlled by the same spirit that is saying death to America. No, ain't no death to America. I'm running for president of the United States because I love this, this country. I love my people. I have grand, you got grandkids yet? I'm asking you, do you? No, sir. I just had my first child. So Congratulations. How, how, how is, how is, huh? He just turned one. Right. Well, I got children and grandchildren that age and younger. I'm just saying. So wow, and they, and David Duke. Man. Right. <laughs> and, and David Duke got grandkids. So let me tell you, you can't resist the power of love. So I don't care if they call them the white boys or whatever new names you said. You can't resist love when it hugs you. It'll squeeze the hate or the fear. There's no hate. White people don't hate us. It's fear. Mm -hmm. they, they, they have fear that we're going to do to them what they did to us. No, it's love, man. And that's why the day we walk in office, it's a clean slate for all Americans. You know what I mean? That's why we said we're establishing the American Race Treaty. What's that? That on your application, it's not what's your race. No, we are all racing together, right, for the advancement of our country. Now, who wants to get on, on, on that bandwagon and let's race together? Because why? what difference does it make? If, are, are you a Hispanic trying to get this long? First off, you'll never be alone again under my administration. And your signature is your credit. If you can write, you got a house, right? There'll be no more homelessness under our administration. No, that's a set hour because I'm cluing you in, right? In California. Yes, and I did hear earlier, you need to run a third time for governor, right? Because next time you will win, right? Because we will endorse you and we will support you and we will oh, wow. love you. We will help you and we will get you to where you're supposed to be. There was a reason why it didn't happen then. You know what I mean? We have to move the Terminators out of the way. What I mean by that, I mean literally. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Because Terminators is real. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it, that's that's a, that's that's not a game. You think it's a coincidence? Trump, right, had the apprentice, and then who took it over? Uh, Schwarzenegger. Think it's a coincidence? Mm -hmm. Trump is from Germany. His family, Schwarzenegger's family is from ostrich. It's not a game. It's not a game. It's not a game. But let me tell you something. Love is the key. Love can tame even Bill Gates. Bill Gates came out with the model for CDC. I started telling everybody, the CDC and the who. No one said it until your brother, your servant, began to say that the CDC is complicit, right, in dumping what? Pneumonia and tuberculosis. When you say corona, let me end it like this. Corona has been out since 1969, the same year that we sent Apollo 13 to the moon. What does Apollo mean? To destroy, right? What did it destroy? Let me tell you, the, I don't want to go too fast. July 10th, 1962, please know, July 10th, 1962, we, our United States military, by a scientist named Van Allen, you may have heard of it, sent a nuclear warhead, right, to the exosphere of our, of our planet and destroyed the 
exosphere. Why? Because you cannot send a space shuttle through the exosphere or the thermosphere and get to the moon. You were burn, you were burned up. So what was the problem? We were racing. See that? For the wrong reason, racing to the moon. So what we did was destroy the Van Allen belt, which caused corona, the corona flares of the sun. You know the outer flare of the sun is corona. All of that bacteria went in here and started causing Americans to die of cancer. Listen to me. The day we walk in the office, we eradicate cancer and we start giving compensation to anybody who ever died or if you know anyone who's ever died of cancer. Why? Because it happened under our watch, meaning we, the United States military, United States government, you notice what I'm saying, we, we are responsible for all the cancers that are taking place. People, United States citizens should have never had it, right? It was all based on greed and pride and ego trying to be the first to get to the moon. Do a research. Don't believe what I'm saying. Look it up. And now I'm saying it's time for love and justice. Compensation. That's what I'm about. That's beautiful. And as corny as it sounds, love can heal all. And yes. it's sad that we've gotten away from that idea and that sentiment, uh, not only as a nation, but as a community. You know, you go into certain neighborhoods and it's all about hating on each other. It's all about being disrespectful and um, being distrustful. And we need to reignite that fabric that connects us. Yeah. And it is love. You know, if we had more representatives out there speaking in the name of love, acting in the name of love, then we would see more products come from that love. Yes. Uh, and I have met proud boys. I'll let everybody out there know I've met proud boys. I've shaked hands with them. I've hugged them. Like you said, <laughs> I'm taking yeah. pictures with them. <laughs> and they seem like pretty good guys. Yeah. Uh, they just need to be educated, you know, and focus that, um, I, I, I guess, that anger towards other people, towards the state and, and those powers that would rather see us, we the people, uh, continue to be suppressed and oppressed under their uh, authority and their leadership. Um, and it's sad that we can't see ourselves as being one, a one uh, race, a one uh, country, and uh, one people, it, it, and that's where we need to get back to. And you seem definitely to be a spiritual ambassador for that. I thank God that you have come down to earth <laughs> to bless us with your presence and to also to just speak for us. I mean, because we need more people like you out there um, sharing this information. So I can't thank you enough for answering all of my questions because uh, I don't let anybody out there know any of uh, the questions that I'm going to ask beforehand. So I appreciate you for asking each and every one um, as thoroughly as you did and for blessing us with your time to be here on the Black Side of Liberty, President Body. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Best of luck to you and your campaign. And like I said, please let me know if there's anything that I can do to help you be seen and heard by more people, because I'll do everything that I can to lift you up to the highest degree, my man. You certainly deserve it. Can I just say one thing? I want to thank my brother, Vice President Eric Stoneham. I want to thank um, my publicist, Mr. Carl Millender. I'd like to thank my family, my bishop. Right. Uh, and I'll, more importantly, I'd like to thank my wife, the first queen of the United States and my son Malachi and all of my children and everybody who's listening, those and your supporters, your lovers, your supporters. And my VP will be contacting you soon. Um, my pastor as well, I'd like to give her a shout out. My VP will be contacting you soon. There's a work that we need to do to get on the ballot in California. We need your help and we love you and congratulations on your victory in advance. Oh, thank you so much. I certainly need it. <laughs> I'll do everything that I can to make sure more people in California know about you. I'm I'm a big supporter of better options. You know what I mean? And I yeah. feel like uh, uh, the vast majority of people right now are being um, disheartened by this election because they're seeing these two puppets be propped up and that's they think that's all they got. They need to know there are better choices, people like you that are running for office to represent it and for represent them and that they have a, cho a chance to support you and put you in that position. So I'll definitely be letting everyone out here in California know about you and um, do all that I can to help you get that ballot access as well. So Thank you. we'll Thank definitely you. be talking more, brother. Well, I, I think we got a lot in common. <laughs>
we definitely got more work to do together. So we do. R19 body, thank you again for being here on the Black Side of Liberty, my man. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Wildfire. We enjoyed you. We love you. And bless your family. And bless your little one. And bless your family. Thank you. God bless you. Same to you and yours, my man. Okay. And again, everyone, is President R19 Body, who is the candidate running for President of the United States of America. You can write him in. If you don't like Trump, you don't like Biden, you don't like anybody else, <laughs> I know you liked what he had to say. So please definitely be sure to write that man in. You can do it. People think that they're stuck. They get on in the voting booth. And they only have those two to choose from. No, you're going to see a shitload of other candidates on there. And if you don't know any of them, you just got to know President Body. If you want to get to know him even more, head on over to his website right here, PresidentBody2020.com. Find out more about him and what he is offering to do for you, we the people, if he is elected to serve us as president. All right. And of course, as I said, um, during our conversation, I am planning on running for governor again. <laughs> so please head on over to uh, Crowdpack, crowdpack.com backslash wildstar, uh, backslash C, backslash wildstar, the number four, gov. Head on over to my Crowdpack today. It's a crowdfunding website for political candidates. And I am officially declared now as a candidate for California governor. So uh, $5 would definitely help. $20, every bit of those donations go towards making sure I am seen and heard by more people. Some fucktard left a comment talking about stop asking for donations. Well, guess what? Let me tell you how the political game works. If I got some multimillionaire that walks up to me and says, I'm going to fund your entire campaign. Great. Thank you. Give me the money. Now I get elected. I get into office and they say, OK, I need you to pass this bill. And I say, no, I don't want to pass that shit. They say, fine. And guess what? Next election, I'm going to be putting all of the money that I gave you on your opponent. OK, that's how politics work. And if they got the money to get you into office, they got the money to get your ass out of office. We don't want that to happen, do we? We want to make sure that if I get there, I can stay there and I can do the job that I need to do to serve you. And I don't want to have to pay to get a job. You get a job to make money, not to lose money. <laughs> and as I said, if you give me the job of governor of California, who currently right now gets paid $15,000, $17,000 a month, I'll reduce that salary to just 60 k a year, which is five grand a month, because I don't need to be rich. I just need to be able to serve my people, do like my man body said, and do what God put me on this planet here to do, and that's serve you, we the people. So please, again, head on over to my crowdpack.com backslash C backslash wildstar4gov. Make a contribution today. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you don't want to give me your money, please definitely give your money to the Recall Gavin team. They are doing everything that they, th that they can to remove this tyrant from power. This is our third attempt to recall the governor since he has assumed office in January 2019. So in that short little bit of time, he has lost the faith of the majority of the people in here in California. But again, because those superpowers paid for him to be in power, it is hard for us to get him out of power. We need you out there, your people power to help remove him from power. So head on over to recallgavin2020.com. Please be sure to sign that petition, print it out, sign it, circulate that petition and uh, donate if you can to help uh, help them be able to get more publicity, more exposure and let people know about this recall effort. Uh, it's been extended to, uh, I believe, February. If they asked for an extension for these deadlines, the deadline uh, signature deadline is November 17th, but we want to do everything that we can to get that needed signature amount of 1.5 million signatures. That's how much they're requiring us for to get to get him out of office. So right now we just hit the half a million mark. We requested for an extension, which could possibly be approved, which means we'll have until February. But in the meantime, we have until November 17th 
to collect as many signatures as we can. So please, again, get involved in that recall process today. Um, also, I'm involved with We Have Rights, which is a nonprofit organization, and we have been coordinating rallies throughout the state to inform more people about the recall, as well as uh, uh, join with those businesses, families, students that right now have been told that they are non-essential, they are not able to go to school, they're not able to go to church, they're not able to go to work or anything like that. And we wanna make sure that they have an opportunity to get their lives back to normal before this whole new normal took effect. So get involved <laughs> with We Have Rights and you can do so by heading on over to wehaverights.org. Please find out more about the organization and how you can get involved. Uh, the many events that we are having throughout the state, you can definitely get in, involved in those. And if you don't wanna get involved with the events, or what we're doing with the recall, please donate to our cause so we can help again, bring more awareness about what we're attempting to do to make sure that we have representatives that are upholding their oath to defend the United States Constitution. Gavin Newsom definitely is not doing that. He's violating the constitutional oath he took and he's violating our, we the people, constitutional rights by forcing us to do things that we don't want to do, right? <laughs> so please, again, get involved in the recall efforts, get involved in the reopen efforts right here, as you can see down at the bottom of the screen, recallgavin2020.com and wehaverights.org, okay? And if you want to find out more about what's next to come in your life or maybe in the world in general, please come on back Wednesday, each and every Wednesday, my wife hosts 